Draft your LCS team and earn money. Alpha Draft. He's coming in, playing mid. They still have Junkers in the jungle and they have Wu Light as AD carry. So I think generally they just upgraded every single position they could. Because during the off season, you see a lot of pros taking like a week break or they go on vacation or whatever, because that's the only time we actually have to do that. But I didn't see Rocket doing that. I just saw them spam a lot of solo queue. And I see them like often in the same games and stuff. So I think they duo queue too. And they generally just play the game a lot. They have a coaching staff too. and have a manager, so I think they're like settling in really well here in Berlin. Their practice is going all right too, so I think they're only gonna get stronger. Frag and Wits praise for that revamped Rocket lineup. Welcome back to our continuing coverage of the European LCS. Two season teams are about to go at it as Elements prepares to face Rocket. Let's start by taking a look at Elements' lineup. They'll be on the blue side for this game. In the top lane, Wicked in the jungle, Shook. In the mid lane, Froggen at AD carry, Reckless, supported by Nif and their coach, Trash Heap 87 <laughs> What a wonderful name. 2-1-1, uh, yes, uh, they are right now. Elements yesterday, a win versus the Copenhagen Wolves. And Froggen said in, in the after game interview, well, we did mess up the early game versus the Copenhagen Wolves. Yeah, it's um, really important not to give out those early kills against better teams because it can really snowball out of hand and Rocket is for sure a better team, I think. And if they do those kind of mistakes again, it can really backfire on them. And they are supposed to be like the best team in Europe, but they seem a bit sloppy compared to especially SK and even maybe a bit to Fnatic, but we'll maybe see them come back. I completely agree with that. I think the amount of expectation on elements coming into the spring split, they are definitely not living up to that hype and not living up to what people were anticipating them to do. You would have thought Elements would be winning in the way that SK is winning uh, and maybe thinking SK was going to find their way up. Somebody that I'm looking at on the squad of Elements is Nif. I just, I don't think, I don't think he's as impactful as some of the other supports when you look at Annie and Leona play and you look at his vision control. Uh, that 130 wards placed seventh among the supports out of the 10 teams. It's just, it's not the vision we're seeing. I really think other players are having stronger engages, and I think Nif, as well as the rest of Elements, are all just uh, dragging their feet up a little bit. Talking about engages, we did see Vander on his Thresh again yesterday where he kept him in the game, so we will see how Nif will react to that and if he will equally ward. Let's take a look at the lineup for the opponents of Elements. I said Rockat in the top lane, Overpow. Jungling is Jankos, the first Blood King in the mid lane. Yukduk at AD. Woolite supporting is Vander and their coach is Ducky. Yesterday was their best performance yet, I feel, even though they didn't manage to close it out versus Fnatic. They had a good game plan of going to the late game. They stuck to it. It just didn't work out at the very end. I agree. I think, you know, if you look at Woolite in particular, um, all of the pressure was on him. They wanted his Tristana to get fed. He was the only one that was wave clearing, really. More impressive for me was just how well um, Rocket defended. They never really presented opportunities for Fnatic to punish until the very, very late game. Yeah, um, for sure. Like, they played pretty well. And the main mistake was just Rain over punishing Woolite all, all, over and over again. Like, it's so impressive as a jungler taking out a full items Tristana late game. Like, how can you even do that? Just completely winning the fights alone. Mention it in the lineup. Sorry, mention it in the lineup. Jankos is a first blood king. He still gets those, but it seems that he has a harder time translating that into getting Rock out ahead in that early game and maybe grasping it early. Is there anything he can do maybe to uh, capitalize on those? I guess it's mostly about his picks, like Rengar, if you play him really well, he can be a terror late game even, but if you keep playing this Java and Lee Sin, they are not really all that great. I also think they need to try and get Nuke Duck in a slightly better position. He had a much better game on LeBlanc yesterday than we saw last week. Still went for a fairly early Magi's that honestly was not particularly awe-inspiring. Um, at the end of the game, yes, it worked out he had a bunch of stacks, but I think the money could have been spent better elsewhere. And I think if Jankos had been helping Nuke Duck more efficiently, they tried in week one and failed. They didn't even try yesterday. Nuke Duck was left to his own devices and it was about the other lanes. But I just think this guy that was brought in that Froggen was saying is an upgrade from Overpower, it's not paying dividends in at least my mind. Could be the mind games because Froggen is up against him now. Maybe he's uh, prepared to uh, put him down. Now let's hand it over to the caster desk to get into picks and bans. Thank you. Shocks. Now this matchup's going to be pretty interesting, I think, to Fischio because oh, yeah. Rocket. Although they're one and two right now, they've had a very tough schedule, exception maybe being Gambit. 
And Elements, as they mentioned on the desk, a little bit sloppy in some of their wins, even against Unicorns that kind of just powered through. Froggen really went beast mode in a lot of these situations. Yeah. We'll Two see games they're really in a row relying now. a lot on it, yeah. Two games in a row for Froggen where he's really been stepping it up and actually doing really well. I mean, the game yesterday was all about him just making picks 1v2, 1v3 even. He could get a kill on the Ari and just get out of it. But Elements as a team, they stick to this slow and steady play style. And we don't see the big flashy plays in the early game. Like we see from like Unicorns of Love, maybe from H2K here, we just saw in the last game. We don't see those kind of aggressive plays. It's more just, you know, take it fairly easy, get your items, get one or two items completed, start playing around the vision, control the minion waves, and then you really take your advantage and you just don't really take any chances. Yeah, on the side of Rock Ad too, Nuke Duck, he's had a little bit of, um, I would almost say overconfidence. He's built Medjai Soul Stealer twice. It did work out for him a little True. bit better yesterday, but there was a point when I think he was on like one or two stacks. It just really wasn't all that great for them. And against a team like Elements, you can't get cocky because you will get shut down. It may take a while, and as Rocket's been a much more defensive team of late, we could be in for a very long game. That is true. I mean, again, the Nuke Dog style is just his confidence showing. Yeah, I can get kills on this little one here. I can stack my soul stealers. I'm going to go for it. Uh, we've seen the fail, and we actually saw it work okay yesterday, where he got quite a lot of stacks on it. Well, we'll see if they do it again. Picks and bans are underway. Elements taking Zed off the table. No surprises. Froggen does not like a bumpy laning phase. No, Zed's been banned by Elements in every single game, actually, I believe, so far. And yeah, I mean, Froggen can play it, I know he can, but he just really doesn't want to play it at this point. And just ban it away instead from Elements. Same goes for Jenna, which typically is not the go-to support for Vanda, who likes Thresh more. Even picked it yesterday when Janna was open. So I'm not really sure what Elements is aiming for with the Janna ban. Yeah, a little bit curious. Uh, Rockat, of course, taking away Ella Wicked's Aurelia. And Azir has been removed, Lissandra now as well. So a lot yeah. of top lane and flexible targets, really. You have to ban Azir against Rocket. So Leaves Nar open, though. Make sure, yeah. Rek'Sai is open as well for Rocket here, but Elements decided to get Nar instead. And we have to remember Rek'Sai yesterday was played by Shook, and he didn't, he didn't have too much impact on the game here. Javan is going to be open for them. So I actually think getting the Nar and the Javan now, so you have that combination, is better than first picking the Rek'Sai for Elements. I think they did the right choice. But... We do see Nuke Duck getting his LeBlanc, and now actually, there's going to be a bit of discussion here about the Rek'Sai. It was locked in. Coach might have something to say about that, Ducky. Shaking his head a little bit. Pretty sure what's happening. Everyone is smiling. But yeah, Rek'Sai for Yankos here, and obviously, again, the LeBlanc from, uh, from Nuke Duck. Early picking it. Cassidy was banned by Rocket again, so they avoid that matchup, which ended up burning a Nuke Duck in the first game of this LCS, actually, for Rocket. Yeah, Froggen has playing. an opportunity to make this big counter pick here. We'll see what he does go with, but he doesn't have to take it this rotation. I agree, the Jarvan is still up. They don't even have to take that because Rek'Sai has been picked. Yeah. This allows Reckless and Nif to fill out their bot lane if they want to, and they will. Reckless has done nothing but Graves so far, and he goes with it again. Nif instantly with the Leona. Again, it's a very strong laning phase and then a good mid-game power spike on a Grace where you can force these team fights. You have now already a champion who gets very tanky very early on. Second item, maybe even first item, tends to be a war moxie and suddenly he can join these team fights instantly and have a massive impact together with Leona. I was not impressed by Nif yesterday on, on Leona. I think he missed too many uh, opportunities to engage where he simply just missed his skill shot. But uh, we're going to have to see what he can do today on it. They do like to play around these aggressive supports as well. We have seen Blitzcrank, of course, as well from Elements. We have indeed. And this is a curious hover here for Rock Cat. An old combo, the Jinx and Thresh. If they do lock it in, Woolite actually has been a little bit subpar. And this is a oh, risky yeah. choice, just like the LeBlanc early is. But Rock Cat do like to live dangerously. They lock it in. Okay, that is a risky lock in when you already see a Nar Lissandra, oh, sorry, La Nar Leona. And even Graves will have a very easy time against Jinx in the laning phase. So I find this to be somewhat of a risky pickup for Rocket. But they like to go for these late game AD carries. Tristana yesterday and Woolad actually didn't manage to do enough late game. He was jumping in 50 minutes into the game and got one on one by Reyno with a jungler from Fnatic. And that wasn't good enough from him. Well, it's at least thematic. Because as Quickshot said yesterday, Team Rocket. Sometimes they're blasting off, but we'll see if it's in the right direction. <laughs> On the side of Elements, you've got the Lee Sin pickup. 
Shook preferred that over the Jarvan. So this is actually one of the first times we've seen Jarvan yeah. not picked, not banned, not even touched. Yeah, very surprised actually not going for Jarvan, but this shows Elements want even more early game power on this Lee Sin because we heard Rainover on the analyst desk say the reason we don't see him so often, the Lee Sin pick, is because you rely on getting going early on, you rely on getting these ganks early where Jarvan is good in late game teamfights, where Rek'Sai is good in late game teamfights, so you can farm and still have a massive impact on the game. But for me, Elements, what they're doing here, again, they're looking for a pick comp where you now have the Lee Sin who can roam between the lanes and actually join in whenever we have these late game one-on-ones, 2v2s in the side lanes because Elements are going to do 1-3-1 one, one, like we saw yesterday with the Ari from Froggen and now Shu can just be very mobile and be part of these fights all the time. Absolutely, and Rockat have a pretty solid mid to late game scaling factor. The really dangerous portion of this is if Elements can't get to the back and pick up Will I? A Jinx can snowball out of control faster than you yeah. can blink, and that's the real trouble. And you have a perfect setup for the Jinx. You have the obviously the burst from a, from a LeBong here. You have the ulti coming in from, from a Rumble. So you get all these members really low, and then you get one kill on Jinx. You get your passive proc, and you can just clean up the team fights. But that requires Woolite to actually survive the engage on a flank that will come from Elements again and again and again in this game here. If he gets locked down instantly by Leona or by a charm, he's out and suddenly Rocket can't win the team fight. Yeah, we'll have to see how well they're able to protect him, of course. We saw yesterday quite a lot of saves on that Thresh, so we'll see if he can do it again if he's even needed now with the picks and bans all in the books. Let us know who you think has the edge. Go ahead and tweet us at LOL Esports using the hashtag ELWIN or ROCWIN. We'll check out those results in game, but for now, this is looking to be an explosive start. I'd actually go so far to say as we might even see a lane swap in this situation for Rocket. Think it would be smart. There we go. The banners are lit. The stage is set. And we are on to the rift. Elements versus Team Rocket. And they're off. This really is one of those matchups you're just looking forward to all week. Two very, very strong teams in Europe. One of them has picked up two two wins. Lost to Fnatic, of course, from Elements. And then Rocket, everyone talks so highly of them. Everyone says they made some good changes. We haven't really seen it work out yet for them. And we haven't seen a NAR start boots at level one before from Wicked. That's the first time. Yeah, that is a little bit interesting. Not getting any combat stats at all. They're going to roam into this bush in mass. Ward's going to spot them out. So Rocket knows what's up. Pings are flying, and this is going to be a couple of wards down. I think Elements is not actually going to go for the deep wards just yet. They're waiting. Well, they're baiting it here a little bit. So now Rocket thinks there's a ward between the two towers up here on the top side, just in the shadows around the crooks as well. Even though there won't be from Elements because they didn't actually place anyone. And you see also Rocket is pinging in that area right now. Yeah, now it's again they're going to be revealed. Elements is going to prompt Overpow to back away from this one, but the rest of Rocket is here, and this is actually a 5v4 right now because Froggen hasn't made the move. Overpow oh, trying to behind them. Bite the, oh, yep, this could be dangerous. Lee Sin Q comes in, but Froggen has arrived. And this is a really tense moment in the early game here. Elements, now wise to what's going on, are going to back away. So again, for this Elements comp here, we're going to see the 1-3-1. One, one. We're going to see a lot of focus on vision control so you can flank around Rocket in these team fights. And the Lee Sin pick, I really want to see how Shook uses it because he has to be very active in the early game and he has to be able to join in to the, when the side lanes are fighting one-on-one -on -one later on. And that's why he's picking it for that extra mobility and his skirmish potential. But he needs to be able to use it and not get forced into a straight-up 5 versus 5 so That will be tough for Elements if they just walk face-to-face -face with Rocket. Yeah, we mentioned risky picks, but yeah, Elements taking a bit of their own. But Shook referring that Lee Sin as a bridge to the mid and later game for this team. And we'll see if they mix up their strategy a little bit more. Everyone always talks about Elements and say, hey, these are the guys that are happy to sit back and wait until the later stages of the game. But a lot of map movements early on, and there is the lane swap, but it's actually Elements that opts to take it. Yeah, again, they did the same yesterday when they had the Leona pick up. Don't want to play the 2v2 laning phase. Obviously, Thresh can't play her away when she tries to engage and actually keep Bullard fairly safe in that laning phase. So 2v1 also against the Rumble. Want to try and deny him a little bit, even though Rumble still, as we've seen so many times, because he requires so little gold to be effective, he just need hardening guys and upgrading his boots so he gets more magic penetration, then he can actually team fight. He doesn't shook. He doesn't get burned too much in these swaps. They're gonna, yeah, find overpower here. Yeah, it's it's not working too badly for them. And, and the boots early is actually pretty solid for Wicked if he does have to go for the double jungling. Yankos now. Not really. I don't even get why he's starting boots for that. You would rather have some combat stats. Unless you're planning on roaming, 
the entire time on the Gnar in this uh, lane top and not actually go down to your bottom lane and take the 1v2 Well, situation. they did plan this. I mean, this is a little yeah. bit oh, for sure. awkward in that case. Nif and Reckless actually fast pushing this tower in and not happening on the bottom side. Woolite and Vander yeah. frozen it out a bit more. Yeah, they will build up a very big wave here. And because Overpart Yankos is on the bottom side of the map, it means that Wicked won't be able to teleport to the bottom lane and then not actually get tower dive instantly by Rocket. So they're staying around. If Wicked decides to teleport, then he's dead man. He should be smart enough and just start walking back and realizing they're just going to trade top tower for bottom tower. Looks like that's what's going to happen. They don't have quite the wave or the damage to accomplish it just yet. But now Vander, Woolite are pushing this one in. And there's a little bit of help or at least some support in the wings with Yankos and Overpow who are going to be backing away. Actually deciding they might just go ahead and try to take the tower right here. They do have the damage all together. So almost a bit of a throwback here to the 4VO. Yeah, so because Elements was pushing the wave over the top side, getting a lot of damage on the tower, Rocket decides to respond with the same, building up a big wave, and then obviously again keeping Overpower and Yankos on the bottom side to deny Wicked if he showed up in this bottom lane. And that's actually a perfect setup now by Rocket. They've managed to get an extra minion from Elements, which means it's now going to push towards Rocket. So there's seven minions from Elements and only six from Rocket after they killed the tower, making it even harder now for Wicked. And actually, because Nif is there now, he should be able to push it out, so... Elements dodging a bullet here by Nif roaming down from the top lane and helping out Wicked push it out. We'll have to dodge several more bullets. Evander does get rolling, but Nuke Duck finding Froggen in the mid. There is a level advantage, but he actually trades a little bit better. Again, this matchup, if you land the charm when the distortion comes in from LeBlanc, you can win the trade on Ari, but it's up to LeBlanc here to start the engages every single time because she has that mobility and you don't on Ari before you level 6. But Froggen, in this one-on-one, -on -one, he's just been out farming Nuke Dog and really done a good job. Yep. And they're going to get the catch on Nif. A little bit of rocket harass. Wicked still having some trouble finding some farm, but he's doing a bit better than Overpow, who has now made his way up to the top to contend with the likes of Reckless. Yeah, Overpower on level 2. We'll get level 3 once he gets minion right here. And we have Yanko staying nearby as well. So once again, Rocket is playing it very safe in the lane swap here. You have already a pink board, so Yankos knows he's not spotted, at least in the tri bush. Now that we've seen a number of Rek'Sai in uh, both parts of the LCS here, I'm curious to see how Yankos does on this one. We'll take a look at that win, though. Elements fan base coming out strong, 63%. Yeah. But there is still some core fans of Team Rocket as well. I mean, you have to respect Rocket as a team, because they are very, very good players. They haven't been able to really find the win yet, and we have seen a change of of style actually from uh, Rocket. Gone back to the old KMT days when they qualified to the LCS in the first place, where they played some very, very long games, like to go full late game. And then in the LCS, they were more explosive. They were making big plays early on. They wanted to really try and finish out the games fast. And now they've actually gone back to a very late game focused style where Bulat is picking these late game AD carries. And you don't mind sitting back and just farming and waiting and not necessarily taking any chances. And that's fine when you're dealing with uh, Shook on Elise Sin, who's really yet to make a whole bunch of plays as he moves up to the top side. Going to run into a pink ward, but he's not going to reveal himself because Nif is there to clear that one out. And he's going to clear out the Rek'Sai tunnel as well. Yanko's actually making a move over to Drake, and he wants to start this one off. Yeah, as soon as uh, Nif showed himself in the top lane, Morgan was like, okay, we are going to have more guys on the bottom side of the map, so let's just start the dragon. Shook is there as well, so all Oboe has to do now is just not go back to his tower, because then he's going to die. Yeah, he's in a little trouble. That tower is pretty low. He's oh, going to realize Obo. he's in a trap. He's got the flash, immediately uses it. Zenith Blade on. Shook is there as well, connecting with the Sonic Wave Resonating Strike. Overpow still alive. The flash oh, from Obo. Shook, and that's first blood. Not sure why he went that way, as you're right, but. Rocket will secure the dragon as he bought enough time for that to happen. He had one job, just stay back, get the dragon, let Elements take this tower here, and it's fine. Instead, first spot now for Shook on this Lee Sin. Gonna be a very fast warrior enchant for him. Shook will also grab some Krugs for his trouble there. So yeah, Overpower having a little bit of trouble. Still fairly even in the gold game. One tower edge to Rocket as well as that newly picked up Drake. Reckless happy to continue farming it out as he has a slight CS lead. Hasn't even backed yet. Should be able to as soon as he gets this tower. And there it goes. Actually, he's going to stick around. But yeah, turn tail and run because Woolite and Vander are coming. Yeah, so again, Rugged is just swapping around here. Because the bottom lane is already, or the tower on the bottom lane is already gone. Swapping up to the top lane. Dragon 
been taken away by Rocket, so no real reason to stay in the bottom side of the map. So there's no objectives anymore. Start pushing down the second turret with this Jinx. And that's the thing you can do on Jinx. Your ability to fast push towers is fantastic with your Gatling gun, and that's what they're using. It's not the Gatling gun, that's called the machine gun. It's a pow pow. Whatever it's called. I think where she shoots at the tower very fast. She does do that. So they're going to start pushing here against Wicked, who's going to have a little bit of trouble dealing with that one. Meanwhile, the rest of Rocket down over by this blue buff, helping secure that one up for Nuke Duck as he moves back to his tower. Still settling back into this landing phase after the fast push of towers, but Rocket really in a good position right here just because of the fast pushing damage, as you mentioned, but they have to be careful. This minion wave is dissipating fast against Wicked. Hook is going to connect. They're going to drag him into the chompers, and he hops away. But still, nice harass from the dual lane of Rocket. Yeah, and Elements are not sending anyone up here to help Wicked, so they will be losing the tower. And you have a two and two in the bottom lane because Rek'Sai is there defending. So Rocket at the moment, just putting all the focus on getting down these outer turrets and elements and not really responding with anything in return. They're going to try to go on the bottom, but it's kind of difficult. Willite gets excited and he starts to shove Wicked even further back. No response here, but a lot of members of elements were making their way down bottom side. Now they think better of it. Nuke Duck forces the attention of Froggen in the mid. All right, now Shug as well. Coming there we go. Ooh, oh, Charm goes he left. He's going to Spirit Rush it away, but now it's Nuke Duck's turn to try to get in. He misses some crucial skills as well. And we see Shook now go down to the bottom lane after taking his red buff. So now they can actually push it in with three guys. Yankos as well decide to recall. Couldn't really defend the tower. Two versus three here. So there's a response from Elements. Trading two towers. And actually, they can be fairly happy doing this because they do manage to keep, even in terms of tower, kills on the global gold. And then you already have your mid laner beforehand were winning on farm, but now New York, New York has caught up. Yeah, Will I actually doing quite well in the farm game this time around? We'll see how that continues up against Reckless. Elements hanging around closer to this mid lane right now, clearing out some vision as they continue trying to push towards. Yeah, the big difference here is how much farm Wicked has actually been able to pick up. After these towers have gone down and first the bottom lane, now the top lane, compared to Overpower, who's just been kind of stuck trying to get some XP but not really pick up any farm. And Jankos, no, Jankos he is charmed oh, up though, nods aggressive. nearly enough, and he's going to rely on Vander to save his life. So, bit early on the gank attempt, and that is going to get deflected by elements. But Vander and Willite roaming once again back down this side of the river. And Elements, I mean, the game right now, we have two outer turrets going. Mid lane is the only thing still alive. With Froggen sitting here already, I don't actually expect to see any quick rush on the mid lane from any of the teams. Just go back to the side lanes, especially because Rocket, you want to get your items on this Jinx here. You want to make sure she can scale up into the late game and just get the farm she needs. And obviously you want your Rumble to start getting some magic penetration because Haunting Guys is not completed yet. Sorcerer's Boots are not completed yet either for Opa, so he's very, very weak if we do have a fight around this dragon, which is coming in two minutes. So Rumble really needs to stay in the lane and not go for any fancy grouping just yet. Yeah, he's had some serious trouble getting ahead. And as you mentioned earlier, giving first blood, a little bit desperate to try to grab a little bit of farm here. But he'll have a chance now as Wicked it. backs away. He moves back under tower to be able to pick these ones up. And Vander is also here. Going to actually back. Vander's just making sure Opal can actually get the farm safely and he won't get killed again by elements if they had moved up through the jungle because... Is Vander the bodyguard of Rocket? He is right now, at least, in this game. It's an escort mission for Overpower. He saved Overpower quite a few times. Yeah, he did. Not, not, not even this game, but just like all around. Well, he saved Yankos as well. I mean, Vander's really stepped up the Thresh game. I've been very impressed by him in that regard. And we'll see how he shapes up this time around. Nuke Duck looking for an opening, but Nif is there. Yankos as well. Just fakes him out and dodges the charm from Froggen. And both teams just waiting for this one dragon here to spawn. Let's see the gold for Overpower. He's sitting on 1100 right now, so he can go back and get a Haunting Guys completed, but he actually has to use his ulti to clear the wave, so that won't be ready. Or should just be ready in time, maybe, actually, for this dragon. So he should go back, get his magic penetration now, and then Rocket can be ready to set up for a potential 5 versus 5 around the dragon. Yeah, we're gonna have to hurry it up here. Drake is about 30 seconds out, and the rest of elements are slowly converging on that part of the map, pinging out actually in the Rockad jungle as Nif takes an advanced position here. Yeah, this is a very nice setup by elements. They keep 
They keep pushing in the mid lane, so they force Rocket to stay and defend it. And meanwhile, you have a lot of deep wards placed around this dragon here, which is perfect when you play Ari in the mid game. If you want to play around the vision, you want the enemy team to walk in blind and have to face check into a charm, because then they will die instantly from the Ari pickup, and then Elements can take the dragon. So they have been controlling it right now. Keep pushing the mid lane, keep getting the deep wards in, looking good for Elements, and also starting the dragon instantly. Yeah, they have that Scuttle Crab Shrine. They're able to burst this one down pretty quickly, and no reaction actually from Rocket. They're pinging it, but they're not keen on going in, and this is going to get given up to Elements one-to-one -one in Dragons at 13 and a half. Yeah, now Rocket is actually moving in. It's way too late for them. Have to get back to this mid lane. Dragon just keep getting a bit of damage on the tower every single time he has the chance. And I like oh, this uh, Scepter pick up from Rogan as well. That magic resist against a double AP. It's gonna do wonders for him. Yeah, certainly a smart adaptation from Froggen. Credit to Nuke Deck dodging a lot of the skill shots this game. Though. He may not have picked up any kills yet, but he's really not presenting too many targets for elements to take advantage of either. No, and very important stays here so we can clear the waves. Because we don't have any items completed on Woodlight just yet. I'm not actually going for Static Shift after the BF Sword to get some wave clear. I think Elements can take advantage of But right now, again, for Elements, they're waiting just for Wicked to become so tanky. He can just sit in a one-on-one -on -one easily and have no problems farming it up with Overpower. Force him away from potential team fights, And then you have Froggen, who's becoming strong on strong on Ari, who's been free farming all game. You can go down to another side lane, and you see the damage he can do already. If anyone tries to one-on-one -on -one him, he will land the charm. He will kill you like he did yesterday against Copenhagen Wolves. Yeah, Froggen went absolutely beast mode in that game. Nuke Duck looking to try to do the same. Finds Reckless, half his health flashing for the chains. Won't connect, the ignite is not enough. But Reckless did have to sweat that one out. Yeah, nice little setup by Nuke Duck. Reckless has been farming the bottom lane. Now mid lane should go down. Yank is also giving it up. Oh, no, actually, coming back to try and do it. Oh, they're going to try it. Ooh, wait the a minute. They found Vander and they blow him up. Nif with the kill credit on that one. One, two, three. Froggen looking for some more. As Yanko's tunnels away, Froggen right back into it. Woolite has to be very, very careful. But they are getting chunked out quite a bit. Wicked close to transformation right here. And Rockat still able to push them away from this, but they have lost Vanderlife. Yeah, there are only three guys around the red buff here. New Dog is running from the bottom lane. He's very far away, so Elements can stay around here. Contesting the red buff, too, and that's going to actually get smited away. At Shook the end of the day, it. that's Shook taking that one away from Rockat as they try to chase down anybody. But Elements just a hair step ahead of Rockat. Slowly poking down the mid tower for the last few minutes, and now it was too low to actually be defended by Rockat. And instant, of course, whoa. Yeah, Nuke Duck dodges that one at the last possible second, but Wicked really providing a pretty big threat on the Snarny. He's not even that tanky yet. Well, he's going to be tanky enough if you, if you consider if we're 60 minutes in, going full tank on the Gnar here. I wanna, don't want to dance around with the Hexstring and delay his uh, tanky items at all. I'm trying to just be a brick wall in his team fights. So far, so good on that front. Brick yet. Rockat have been looking to fire down that brick wall as much as they can, but it's difficult here. Woolite has the damage, but it's way too dangerous to check into this mid. And there's really not much Rocket can do in this mid lane right now. Although, pick potential still there. Reckless dragging the red buff away, but now Rocket has other ideas about picking that one back up, and it does go to Yankos. It was invading in with five guys. Not a whole lot happening otherwise. Very, very slow start. A bit as, as we expected when it's Elements and Rocket. They've been two of the very slow-paced teams who prefer farming and get the safe place where you have to set up a lot of wards before you actually invade into the enemy's jungle, before you look for the picks. You make sure you have all the information needed so you can pre-plan your move. Reckless here should go up and push out this wave in the top side, and then you have all the wards placed in the jungle of Rocket so they can see if anyone moves from the mid lane to the top lane. Yeah, Element's really trying to slow down that defensive style of Rocket by getting picks wherever they can by invading the jungle. A lot of jungle invades from both teams this game around, and they're going to look for it again. Wicked Chilling Smite is down on him, but he burns his flash to get away. And we talked about this in the pregame, you know, off air, that this is going to be a bit of a rougher game for Element's because Rocket is just that defensive team. They are perfectly happy to play the game Element's would want to play anyways, but do it very, very well. And 2-0, that's a fine start. You've got to keep it up there. A bit of a gold lead ahead. But Rocket still has plenty of life in this one. And Woolite is starting to get farmed up.
Yeah, as long as Wulad can keep farming on the Jinx, Rocket is in the game. Try to push down his tower. It's a bit risky. Ooh, Nuka nearly ate a charm there. Yeah, this is very, very risky. The waves are getting cleared quite fast, but the rest of Rocket is here. Reckless is actually making a move down, and he doesn't check into that pink ward. It's one of the ways Reckless really play on Graves, and one of the reasons he likes to play him is because he can actually go to the side lanes and work a bit as a bruiser because he's a bit of a tanky AD carry and feel fairly safe while pushing up the waves and getting a lot of side lane farm. But him and Froggen should be switching up at some point, unless they want to keep Froggen in mid lane just for the wave play itself, where he will be better than the Graves pick up. He does have quite a bit of it. It's actually been a very quiet game from both these AD carries so far. Neither of them really keen on going head to head with anyone else on the team. Even though Graves is a much safer champion than Jinx, Reckless still does like to play this early. Bit of passivity. He does have the Infinity Edge finish. He got those early Berserker's Greaves. But he wants to wait until he's a comfortable ramp up before he goes in. We saw this yesterday again from Elements. Always contesting the buffs. They went for the red buff beforehand. Now it's time to fight for the blue buff. All five guys are staying around it. Yeah. And they slowly just try and grind you out of the game by taking all your buffs, getting some of your jungle camps, and keeping the wards placed deep inside the enemy jungle. And that's how they just play around, make sure they get all the farm. And Dragon now spawning in five seconds. There's no reaction here either from Rock Out. They're actually sending yeah, no, Commander they back. They, they can't contest this. And they still need to get farm on Overpow, who's really just had a rough time. It's delayed his power spike quite a bit. This will be a completely free Drake over to Elements. Rocket will never be able to fight if they don't get it to set up a few wards beforehand, because then they have to face check into the engage from Elements, and suddenly you have a perfect flank set up for an Ari, for Leona to land and engage onto Woolite. And that's why they're staying away from him. But they are giving up two very easy dragons for elements. I think. Funny enough, it's just waiting for Woolite. That third one okay. is going to be a problem. If they do give it up, it gets yeah. the extra mobility. And Rocket are already having hard enough times getting uh, an edge on them. Yeah, and, and elements haven't even invested any gold in to get them because they have double side stone to place on all the wards here. It's not exactly like they're placing four or five pink wards around this dragon here, so you invest 500 gold to getting it. No, they just walk in, use the sweeping lens, maybe one pink ward, and then a few side stone charges, and that's about it. And there's no response from Rocket at all towards it. Yeah, Rocket falling a little bit more behind here, but let's see if they can stay true to their play style and hold out for that very late game that they're known for. And it's really hurt Rocket how Overpower was set so far behind, he couldn't even get an early haunting, guys, which again, you normally on a rumble, even in a lane swap, if he gets denied a lot of farm, he should be able to hit his magic penetration powers like fairly early on. Opa in this game has just been denied so much farm that he hasn't been strong enough for Rocket to feel confident taking any fights or even walking in and setting up the wards they needed to take the potential fight. You gotta think that Rocket is very well aware of element style and what they can do to eventually beat you down. And they really want to get this win here. It would make them two and two to put up a win over elements, what many consider to be one of the top tier, if not the top tier team in the European LCS this year, would be a huge confidence boost to them after having such a tough schedule. But we'll see what they can do here. Nif is going to get caught up by Vander. Reckless is there as well. There's not enough support. And I don't think either team was really that intent to try and fight this one, but they just bumped into each other yeah, in every, the Rock Hat jungle. Everything missed here from their equalizer from Overpower to the ulti from Nif. And everyone just backs away from it. Kind of the story of the game at the moment. Elements moving in, want to contest the buff. Red Bomb is just spawned now for Rocket, and none, none of the teams really going too aggressive in the fights. And just as soon as the main engage is over, you just back away, go back to farming. Elements once again using the side lanes here building up these big minion waves, and then they're ro rotating over to whatever lane where they are about to hit the tower, and you either take down the tower or get it fairly low, so next time you can take it. Yeah, elements definitely have the wave control in their favor. Up in the top, it's about even, but everywhere else, starting to look better for this element squad. Wicked gonna jump onto Woolite Lantern. Will keep him from any harm whatsoever as the rest of elements converge on this bottom tower. How Again. good is the anti siege? Froggen coming in, trying to pick two targets at once. He does make a pretty good job of it. Overpower pretty low as Wicked comes in, but he's overextended in this one. They've defended them. Super Mega Whoa, Death Rocket just barely does not kill Wicked. And now Rocket in hot. 
Pursuit, they're gonna find him, and there we go, overpower. That's some much needed gold for the Rocket top laner, and they're still chasing. Yeah, coordination uh, problems here for Elements. Froggen just wanted to see if he can find a quick pick with the charm, and then dash out again of the tower, but Wicked went in all alone behind the tower as well. And Rocket managed to just kill him and force Elements away, despite them having a massive wave around that bottom lane. This might be the opening to try and pick down that middle turret finally as well. They're all going to converge on it as several members of Elements have backed away. Shook and Reckless making a mad dash back to mid lane, but it might be a little late for them. And Rocket have found a way back into this one. They weren't really behind on the game, but that's definitely very much needed for them. Yeah, that was big for them here. You want to overpower to get his hour at last here, so the goal for him was great. And you got a mid tower for it. Nice little response from Rocket. We could see them try and fight for this next dragon now that Overpower has gotten his magic penetration. And is getting stronger and stronger. Woolite as well. Infinitage is completed. Going towards the static ship next. We have 1 minute and 40 seconds. And I actually think Rocket should try and fight around the hit. this one. Use LeBlanc. Use your Rumble. Get in there first around the dragon. Get up your ward so elements can just flank around you. And you have to blindly walk into Frog and, and then you can actually contest it. Settle down for just a moment as probably we'll see both the teams converging towards that dragon side. As you mentioned, Rocket in a much better position to be able to contest this one, but it's still a tense situation. Wicked has teleports, so does Overpower right now, but it's a dangerous position to be in as Yankos now void rushes his way to the jungle blue buff again. Elements want to take this one away from Rocket, who are a little bit slow to respond. Yeah, it's too easy for Elements to time these buffs here, and every time they go in, take it, place a few wards, and then back away. So no blue buff for Nuke Dog. He's been denied the last few buffs we have seen. And this may do well, though. Really no response, though, from Rocket on all the invades from Elements. Yeah, they are making moves. Everyone but Overpow making moves on this bottom side. They're actually going to leave Woolite alone as Elements sends three members to try and take care of this mid turret. Here comes Yankos for the defense, but it's dropping very quickly. Wicked is here as well. Reckless, the entire team they've brought, and they get themselves a quick second tier. Rockad are not responding quickly enough to these. No, and every time Rocket moves to the side lanes to farm, Elements just punish them somewhere else. Now they can move in to the Dragon. Not a single ward has been placed by Rocket around it, except for that one, I'm flying. Uh, and not that anymore. one is dead. It's okay. They noticed as soon as you said that. Looks like Rocket are looking to try and get a position here, but it's controlled by Elements, and it's difficult to go through this choke. Yanko's moving forward to try and see where Elements are, but there is a five-man zone control here as the Dragon gets started up by Elements. Rocket have to move fast. Actually, Overpow is taking the slow route to try and get in here. This could be the closing of a trap. Nuke Duck actually dashes his way forward. The Dragon going very low, and they might have peeled him off it. Here we go, Equalizer thrown down. Shook and Wicked in panic mode. Froggen is gonna take Overpow. The Dragon goes down, but it's picked up by Wolite with a Rocket. They're able to do even more. Yankos, though, in some trouble. He goes down. It's a two for a Drake. And Rocket pick up their second to even that score. Yeah, very lucky for Rocket here that Wulak tries to get the Dragon, but that was just an awful team fight by them. Oba coming in from the flank and his ulti, no setup, no engage coming in from Rocket by the time, so Elements just walks straight out of it. And they're gonna lose an inhibitor turret here, yeah. This again, is... Rocket is so far behind in terms of the wards and the vision on the map, so they can never walk into the Dragon and actually get a proper team fight. They have to like dance around, jump over walls. And then it's too easy for Elements just to say, fair enough, we're just gonna like pick off whatever target is left alone. And should have, of course, have secured the Dragon, but got two kills for it at least. Yeah, so your Rocket's gonna try to make a play here. Wicked is gonna get chained up and they probably have the damage Whoa, for him. The Rocket does not go where they want, but Nuke Duck will get the kill. This is right by Baron. And are they confident enough to start it? It looks like they are. This has got to prompt Elements to do something, but they are backing away. There we go. There's the cancel of the backs, but it's still a very dangerous situation. Baron is still a difficult task, even as easier as it's been in this patch. Woolite, the rest of them trying to zone off. Shook could get in here for the smite fight, but the trap behind the pit. Woolite, he's gonna get chunked down so fast. Reckless blows him up. They left him alone, and Vander, too long. The Baron is secured, but at what cost? Overpow, no friends around, and there's a double kill. Nuke Duck now in some trouble. He gets popped down. What Baron? That's a triple kill for Reckless, and they clear the board of Team Rocket. Desperation moves here by Rocket. You get one kill onto Wicked, 27 minutes in, and you go straight for the Baron. Wulad was caught in an impossible position. He was standing outside the Baron trying to kill it, 
And that was just too easy again for Elements to engage onto him. No protection, no way for him to actually avoid it. Ends up dying. Fight goes into favor of Elements and inhibitor now. Let's see it again. Notice how Woolad is standing outside the Baron wall here. And there's no chance of him actually dodging the engage from Nip when it starts. Straight onto him. Perfect stun. He's out. AD carry is gone. And now it's just about Elements here cleaning it up. Baron did go down. Favor of Rocket. But they have no chance of escaping. And of course, Froggen on this Auri in the very end. They were so indecisive here. Instead, Yankos and Nuke Duck took a minute to try to get out. As a result, feeding a triple kill over to Reckless, that's not a great way to end that one. So Elements clearly in the lead after that play. About 5,500 gold up over Rocket. And they've lost an inhibitor in the middle very early. Well, early by these game standards. It's 28 and a half. Yeah, the only positive thing is Elements won't be able to bait out a Baron or get the buff and use that to push into side lanes. You always find the silver lining in these things, that Deficio. Is the only thing Rocket gained from the play they made beforehand, but I don't think Elements cares too much. You have silver minions in the mid lane, you have a lot of kills, your AD carry just managed to complete static ship and get another BF sword from beforehand. Already building some magic resist, could just see him go back and get a scimitar fairly early if he actually wants that QSS. Wouldn't be too bad facing down Nuke Ducks LeBlanc, who's actually got a much more conventional build this time around. No Magi's Soul Stealer. For yeah, I, I don't think Rickless is actually going to complete any magic resist item just yet. I think he wants a BT first, but just want to have it because he's against against the double AP and he knows the Rumble ulti is the only thing he's actually going to get to it. There we go. Tower gets the chunk pretty low here, and there's not enough response. Nuke Duck tried to make the play, but he's locked up for just a moment. Vander will. Give the life-saving lantern, and they're looking to try to return it. The equalizer's there. Vander flash forward. He's going to get shook on a line, and they've caught him. But wait a minute. Woolite is going to get that one kill. Wicked still in trouble here as he backs away. Elements thought they might be able to re-engage, and it's Froggen who thinks for a third time. Just maybe they can do it, but they're buying time for the super minions to start rushing down the mid. They have to back out now, and they've only lost one member for that tower. So not a terrible trade for Elements. No, not at all. You got the tower down. Okay, sure, Woolite got the kill. Not exactly the guy you want to pick up more gold from Rocket. He will get his last Whisper very soon. But he's still so far away from a late game point where we actually have to consider him a threat compared to what Elements has on their side because Ari is so fit. Reckless obviously gave this mid early to late game spike on a Grace but he's so, so strong. Making it very hard for Rocket to do anything in these fights. Real question is when this dragon comes up again, what kind of shape are Rocket going to be in to try to push it out? They have to shove these super mini waves as far back as possible to even be in a position where they can fight it out. But it's still incredibly dangerous to meet elements in the open field. This is where they thrive to pick off targets. Yeah, and because they can just walk straight in or blindly into elements, what Rocket and Yankos, not uh, the Yankos, sorry, Vander did here, was he placed the ward, you can just see it on the top of your screen, right outside the dragon pit, which is not a position you expect it to be in, and that's the only hope, actually. If that ward stays alive, they can see what's going on around the dragon, but for now, Elements, they don't care about it. They're just gonna push up their bottom lane, get the last out of turret. Rakat are gonna attempt to meet him head on, but a little bit hesitant here, and actually Nuke Ducks they're not in the greatest position to be able to do it unless they want to try for the flank. Nif is going to deny him that opportunity, and this tower going incredibly low, no chance of defending it as Elements pushes another through, and Nuke Duck, he's gonna have to distort his way away. And now Elements says, well, we've got 30 seconds to at least push this one in before they even need to go anywhere near the Drake. Rocket trying to push that back. Equalizer thrown down, heal is popped. The Zap will connect, they find Shook again, deja vu, but this time he gets away. Rocket still in hot pursuit, but the minions are starting to push up the middle. They have to send somebody back, and Nuke Duck wants a kill so badly, but they won't give him the satisfaction. Oh, too many wards on the side here. They can see Nuke Duck, and also the rest of his team backed away. Once again, try to get a pick on to uh, Shook. Didn't end up working. Dragon over to Elements, get the 5% movement speed. We saw the 15% tower damage as well from the second Dragon in action for them, and then they've been pushing up in these lanes. But they're so far ahead right now, and. Wicked, despite being 0-2, just because he's gone full tank Gnar, he's actually very useful in the fights and jumping right into the face of Wulad every single time. Indeed he has. And Elements are starting to march up. There is no inhibitor in this middle. It's just just about pressure a little bit. It's pretty close, you're right. As Froggen splits down the bottom side, they just continue to keep this siege pressure up to starve Rockad out of anything. Big wave in the top pushing Rocket's favor, but that's a small consolation considering what they've already lost. 
Yeah, Elements just want to get down this inhibitor here and then go back and shop because they should have picked up quite a lot of gold. Yeah, as soon as it respawns, Elements is on this one. Really quickly, but Nuketuck trying to duel it out with Frog Whoa. and then he wins! If you blinked, you missed it. One on one kill, saving inhibitor as well from Rocket, chasing on. Yeah, they back off the Yanko's moment. Oh, he's down. Guys Equalizer down. Reckless as at half his health bar. Yanko's trying to chase him down. Meanwhile, there's a lot of minions still pushing, as we mentioned, in this top side. Yeah, he just wants to stop them from actually recalling. So this tower here potentially Oh, they down. do. He's got to teleport as well. Yeah, minions are going to take this one down. I mean, this is definitely a win back for Rocket, but how far can they push it? See if this minions can actually finish it off. Just a few more hits. Oh no, they're targeting. Ah, there we go. They got it. There, there we go. We they go. were targeting the other minions. All right. It's going to get there too late. Nuke Dog, one on one kill onto Froggen. It's all these small individual plays for Rocket that really keeps them in the game. It was the same against Fnatic yesterday. They were behind pretty much all game long. But they just kept defending. They kept creating a pick somewhere. And in the end, they could start winning some team fights. Through Wulad being very fit and obviously also Nuke Dog on the flank getting enough kills, and he didn't actually go Soul Sealer today. Decided to play more standard, just getting the Death Cap and avoid stuff after the reload. Indeed he did. DFG there though. He's already playing like the next patch. But uh, they are hanging around this Baron Pit, but it's a little bit late as Elements are making a mad dash back up the middle. Baron respawns. Cool new animation, and there we go. There to defend the middle side. Most of Rocket, they've all backed away. See if they can keep this defense up. It keeps the pressure off if they can. A lot of wave clear here coming out for Woolite with that static shiv completed. Yeah, and really, again, around this inhibitor here, it's hard for Elements to get a proper engage onto Rocket because they can stay grouped. And Frogger needs to land like a charm, or Nip has to go in and get the engage onto Woolite. As long as Reckless can get a few hits on it, it will go down in time. There's no real engage option for Rocket unless they pop down Equalizer from Overpower. And that's going to work too well for them, too easy for Elements just to disengage them. Slowly chipping away at this one. It looks like it's just a matter of time, but Elements can't quite find the end to finish it off the way they oh, need it. Wicked. They've actually got the lockdown. There we go. A whole lot of damage with the Equalizer. They found Wicked actually focusing him out as he flashes away. Vander with the hook and the super mega death rocket. Spells Doom, but wait, what's this? They're going in for round number two. Nif, it's a double kill for Wolite. They're looking for more. Somehow, somewhere, Rocket have flipped the on switch, although Froggen finds Overpower. It's still a two for one. Yankos, charm up and two. blown up. Reckless, two for two. Nuke Duck looking for more. Another shutdown. That's Wolite. He gets another double. Unofficial Quadra there. Froggen is gonna go down. And there's the ace for Team Rocket. And again here, Rocket staying in their own base. Elements can't really find an opening to engage onto Woolite. And instead, Nuke Dog actually setting it up. He got a lot of damage onto Wicked. Then Equalizer happened and the fight was on. Woolite was left in the back lane. Ro Elements couldn't pan punish him, punish him. Punish him, yeah. Well, punish him either. Yeah, exactly. Couldn't do anything. They couldn't really do anything at all. And Woolite, it doesn't matter how subdued he was early on. When you get a Jinx going, you get a Jinx going. Five and one, not yet spent that gold. But look at how fast this Baron is going down. Rocket should be able to take it. They've also got minions pushing on the bottom side. This is going to be a close call. Void Rush to try and hold off Nif, and they're just going to back away from it. So Baron secured very safely this time for Rocket, and there is life in them yet. Just like yesterday, Rocket, they managed to just claw their way back in the game. He's like him, team fights. Woolite picked up a lot of kills as well. Very good for him. QSS is completed. All set up by Vander's hooks too. His yeah. thresh is not just for lanterns. Really, really great play from him. It's him game. and Nuke Dog, yeah. Him and Nuke Dog together. Chain and the hook is what actually pokes down elements and sets up that way. Very first kill for Woolite so he gets his passive proc. And then they just start chasing on. And as soon as elements cannot get the flank, Frogan cannot land the charm onto either Nuke Dog or Woolite, then suddenly they can't actually kill him in the back line. To their credit, they managed to pick up a couple of kills there, but it was True. really just was a Herculean effort on Frogan's part and Reckless as well to secure a little bit more damage in that one. But they're starting to second guess that push strategy. And actually, for all that's happened, the gold is just about evened up, a mere 500 difference between these two teams. Yeah, and for Rocket, I mean, if you look at their two members with all the kills, it's the two carries, so it's perfect for them. Overpower's been more of a support rumble, just trying to deal all the damage he could and then end up dying in the very end of the team fight, tanking up some damage, while it's all about Nuke Dog and Woolite staying alive. Oh, Yankos Ooh, should be able to spot them, though, if he's under the ground. Yeah, they're not, there's no reason for them to go specifically that direction, but if they start 
getting a little bit further ahead, Whoa. trying to clear that the tasty looking pink war. There we go. Shook reveals a little early, and all of a sudden the tremors go down, and they realize that all of elements are right in the area. And the good question here is, are they confident enough to fight this? Well, this is the first time we see Rocket actually go down to the dragon before it spawns and sit around it, place a few wards, and be ready for a fight. Not just giving it over to Elements. They have control of the pit too. And they will get with it. the Jinx, it's not hard to start poking these down incredibly quickly. Elements not going to contest this. So now, even on Dragons, and the gold lead moves even closer and closer and closer. A hundred gold differential. Three buffs for everyone as well. And they're going to be able to push down this bottom side. Elements look a little bit lost here. Like they don't know what exactly to do that they've fallen a bit behind. So the thing is, again, they couldn't get the right engage in the base. And this one, they didn't want to fight oh. against the Baron buff. Baron buff the rocket around the dragon here. So wisely enough, decide to just wait it out. Now we'll see if they can actually defend. Only one wave is pushing from rocket. Top lane is going in favor of elements. And mid lane is dead even in the middle here. So they have to back away. Yeah, rocket not overextending themselves. Playing it out very safe, safely. And not giving an opportunity for picks. That has been elements of propensity. Oh, Yankos. He got a little bit late to the party. But he's back in the middle. Elements trying to hold off this onslaught. No nip here to start up the fight just yet, but he is making his way. There's just so much wave clear on both teams that a siege is really difficult on both sides. And also because Wula, he can't stand at the front, so he cannot really get in and hit the towers. He will be engaged on them by Elements. Oh. The charm or nip, of course, so he has to actually play very careful and therefore not able to hit the turrets, just push down the waves every single time. And yeah. Rocket, we'll have the bottom lane pushing for them. They're trying to force and elements to the top lane as well. The tower. Yeah, this so they, yeah, they're in a good position now. As long as the two side lanes are going to push in, you're going to force elements then to make a move. They engage on you in the middle, like they're trying to do now. Onto oh, Woolite. they certainly are. Woolite, he's in some trouble. They got the oh, Zeta. Can he make get it the to safety? Yes, he can, but Overpow has sacrificed himself. They're going to pick Niff here, but Froggen, he's not going to connect the charm. Quite a lot of damage. Reckless is going to get Overpow, and Woolite goes down, split up, and taken out. Divide and conquer is the element strategy, and they pick three for none. Yeah, so Rocket here, while they're sending Nuke Dog and Yangos to push the bottom lane, they stayed in the mid. With Woolite, with Vanna, there was no flash for Woolite in the fight, and then Elements just get the right engage. Easy for them to clean it up. One mistake in the late game by Rocket, and now they might have lost the game. Yeah, Nuketog already just chunked down quite heavily there, and it's such a long death timer for all of these three dead members of Rockat. Elements still getting pushed off by the lasers of the turrets. They don't quite have the waves, but resources are on the way, and they're still threatening. Wicked is going to teleport in on a minion once he actually goes back to base. Oh, Yankos, oh, they're going to try it! Nuke Dog picks up Nif, but that's not the target they needed. Yankos now in some trouble. Do they follow through with the Lee Sin? No, I don't think so. Managed to save it. One Nexus Tower gone, but you're right. Rocket has pushed elements back again. Still, it's back to disaster mode. And Huge minion wave on the top side, however, for Rockat as Yankos looks to try to set up a flank, but there's nobody here. This is not what he should have been doing. Teleport, however, is coming in. Super Mega Death Rocket not going to connect as Reckless dodges away. All Yankos wanted to do here is once again stop the recalls from Elements because the side lanes are pushing in here. They want to try and get a tower for it. Still chasing on Reckless. Yeah, Reckless is going to be able to dash away from this one. And the wave is not strong enough to take down this tower, but still, they've bought some time, and Rocket. For all the praise we gave Elements controlling the waves, Rocket has found a way back into this game time and time again. They have to be so careful as they're sitting now on one Nexus turret, but they have a chance to put the aggression on. Yeah, the setup from before where they actually had the side lane pushing, but then got engaged on the mid lane. And then due to Elements just pushing straight up, trying to finish the game, obviously meant the side lanes were still pushing for Rocket. And now in the end, Tower stayed alive. They will regain some help fairly slowly, and it's all about the Baron now. One minute, 20 seconds. Rocket is setting up for it. And they're recalling. The time. Yeah, they need to get back and defend the mid in case elements do decide to push, but they're actually close to the bottom side now. Yeah, right now Rocket needs to sell some of these sweepers or swap them over to the Greater Vision totems if they want to have a few pig wards to place. Otherwise, they won't really be able to deny too much vision. Because keep in mind the sweeping lens late game. You can get one, maybe two wards from it. The pink ward itself, if you're trying to bait out a Baron and you're trying to force the enemy team to come and blindly face check you. The pink wall will do so much more. Give yourself vision. Obviously keep playing wards if the enemy team placing them. I do want to see them swap some of these sweeping lenses here over to some wards. Otherwise, I mean, they're, still, they're gonna lag behind. They do have a side stone, however, on Rek'Sai now picked up in the late game. So just uh, lacking the pink wards.
Yeah, it's actually Elements. They are the ones who make their moves over to the Baron pit, but it's 30 seconds too early. Yankos is in danger of getting caught out here as they spend the blue trinket on him there. He goes, going to actually tunnel his way to safety as Wicked couldn't quite connect with enough damage for the pick. The rest of the team going to be retreating from that one. And actually, it's not enough to make him set, go back here. Wicked flash just before? Yeah, he did actually. Okay, so they no flash on Wicked now for the next fight. He won't be able to position himself in the Mega now unless the first jump pays off for him. Rocket still around. Baron has spawned 50 seconds on the Dragon as well. And you don't want to rush the Dragon now because then you're going to give up that Baron to the other team. Elements is playing around it. Top wave is massive being built up by them now. Overpower is there as a player. So could start the Baron because Elements has a lot of wards placed around. See everything that's going on. Elements sticking together like glue here and just waiting for any small opening, any weakness that Rocket shows. Nuke Duck going in. Gets a bit of damage chained on to Nif, but he backs out almost immediately. Still threatening on this Baron is Elements, but Rocket is not too far behind. No, they're staying nearby this next team fight. No teleport for Overpower either, though. He has to make the long walk if he wants to do something. Again, we gotta just look at Woolite in these team fights. If Elements can manage to blow him up instantly, they're gonna win the fight. If he stays alive, suddenly Rocket can clean it up. Yes, fully. Itemized now. Scimitar coming away. in. away. Oh, they're moving them towards the dragon, hoping that there's no quick response from Rocket. And actually, there's the Void Rush, but it's only used towards the middle. And actually, slow move, but they are heading towards the Baron, but they're hesitating a bit. They're actually going to let Reckless take this one solo, but they're going to be for just a few moments without the carry. This is actually very, very smart. Yeah. They pick up that fourth very, dragon, very nice. and they don't lose anything for it. Oh, nice play. Just sit down your A to carry in the end. Now back in the mid lane for Olympus. Wicked. The rest of the team, they are pushing through now, but there is still nothing really much to take in the middle, just trying to push Rocket back and prevent them from getting a good position on this Baron. Way is pushing very favorably in the bottom for Elements yeah. right now. That's going to be a problem for Rocket in just a moment. Especially because there's no teleport for Overpower, so he can't go and clear it. They have to send someone who can instant wave clear it, but then risk Elements starting the Baron. So once again, we have this late game situation where a team is sitting around the Baron, they ward up the entire jungle, and then you just pressure these side lanes through the minions, and you wait for a reaction from the other team. If they send the wrong guy to wave clear it, suddenly you might get a Baron for it. And now Shulk and Reckless are starting it. All alone, there's no wards from Rocket on it. They're just scrying okay, so they know it's going on, and they're moving in. They have to get a position in here that will allow them to get back into it, so here we go. Wicked, they're actually peeling off of that one. There we go. Okay. Nuke Duck has to be a little bit careful, though. Nif is very close to him. Enough to Zenith Blade, but won't be required with the Lantern either, so Element still looking very dangerous, looking to push in this wave on the bottom side now. Rocket mobilizing for the defense, but can they do it? Reckless was very far forward, and here we go. They're looking for the chase. Do they have enough of it? They just might, but nope. Elements is going to back away. Elements backing away. Have had a few team fights already where they end up losing from it, where actually Rocket got the jump on them. Elements right now again, go back to the Baron, keep doing the same thing. Push out your top wave now. And then you also have the fifth dragon coming up in just a few minutes, so they have two options. A big objective, objective where Rocket really want to try and defend them the best they can do. So reset the whole thing. Rocket needs to go in now and clear these pink wards if they do see an opening. Rocket is staying around. Teleport from Wicked as well. Yeah, it's coming in. Wicked is going to be there for the defense. But yeah, this is such a tense moment for both teams. Whoever does take the Baron, if they're able to follow up fight, it's going to be so hard for the other team to prevent that onslaught. This is heading to a big fight that I think the winner of it is going to push this one in, although Elements has had the better track record for most of those. Yeah, if you get to the point where the death timers are so long that if you do ace the enemy team, you should be able to finish the game, especially because all the auto turrets are gone for both of the teams. Still just fighting around the river of this Baron here. Clear out a few wards. Back away. Play it safe. Don't get caught out of position here. It's all about Nuke Dog and Woolite for Rocket. All about the engage from Elements. You no, know, for as much 
of a lead at several points that Elements have had. Rocket have been able to thunder back into this one. And now they're trying to catch them separated. Reckless, the rest of his team just gets there. They don't have quite enough damage. Janko sends out the Prey Seeker, but look at this. They have a wave and they have a way to push in middle. But will they be flanked? Frog and the master of this, he's looking for an angle they can get in, but they're going to be a little bit late here. Here it goes. Yeah, notice how Rugged is placing warts on the side every single time they move down towards this mid lane so they can see elements and the engage coming. Oh, they actually go over Oh, Vanker is going there. to save his life there. And the Mikhail's as well. Really, really well done. And Mercurial Scimitar, excuse me, was the one he popped. And I think I debated you right there. Yeah, he got me. Oh, it actually was the Mikhail's pump. Obviously, Scimitar works one cleanse. Well, you know, you've got one or the now. other. Yeah, it's a cleanse. It's an insurance works. policy, really. But all the same, Bander has just made so many life-saving plays in this game alone, but all throughout the last several that Rocket have played. That's kept them from really bad situations. When you have that much trust in your support, it's a beautiful thing there, and it's working out quite well for yeah. Rocket's bot lane. And of course, Vander still really uh, seeing Threshers. He's number one support pick. Off the note, actually going for Gianni, even though it was banned by Elements in this game here. So really the comfort pick for Vanda and the champion he actually got famous for here in Europe, just spamming Thresh every time he had the chance back in the spring split. Yeah, Wally doing quite a good job at not just stalling out, but able to just push back these waves so quickly on this Jinx, up to 500 CS in the game. And it's really frustrating for Elements to try to push against that because there's so much damage being burst up. They're not getting close enough to allow Reckless to pull off the assassination, although he's been able to do it on a number of targets, just not as much. Nuke Duck now looking for Nip. He's found so many chunks on that one, but Nip taken very low, still very tanky. And the Dragon is still a minute away, although the pit is now controlled by Rocket. It is controlled by Rocket here. The side lanes as well, pushing for Rocket. We keep talking about it because it's basically the thing in this game. If you can get a free tower from it, or if you force someone to go back at a at a bad time, suddenly you can take that Baron or you can push down for a good team fight. And that's why it's so important. So for now, it's pushing in favor of Rocket, slowly building up. And that's also why they went straight for this Baron, set up a few wards around it. Oh, they're going to start it off, Not too. Instantly, yeah. yeah, this is dangerous, this game. Balance is on a knife edge, and it's going to be revealed right now. The rest of the team the is there. They land a massive Leona ultimate, but they're actually not going to follow up on it. The Baron's being started again, and they're being forced away. Can Shook get in for the smite steal? They're looking for an assassination. They find Walleye. He's chunked low, but he's he stays alive. alive. He's in the back. Collateral damage. They don't have enough to the finish Baron anybody. Well. The Baron is actually resetting. Walleye picking up Nif. Wicked, extremely low. They found Vander, and they scatter support for support. But will it be elements? trying to take down this Baron now. No, they just clear the vision and everything resets. And that was a very, very close call here for Wulat. He got caught by the charm, I believe it was. Had to pull both his summoners, stayed alive, traded one for one, but Elements now, fifth dragon, is on the table and they're moving forward. Teleport coming in here. Oh, and they have the Rek'Sai ultimate as well. They know this is happening. But it's still a dangerous moment for the Dragon. The rest of the team That's has arrived. The it's still it's a 4v4. They've just moved the Theater of War down to the Dragon Pit. It's actually going to move in favor of Rocket, who are chasing away elements. And this could be the fourth one for them. But Shook is still threatening. Dragon very low now. And they just can't get in here to do enough. Dragon has reset, though. Yeah, Rocket doesn't want to risk any smite steal from Shook. So they're a bit hesitant. They, they secure it. it. Yeah, that it. was picked up by Woolite. Brilliant effort now, four to four in Dragons. Wicked gonna try to make the fight happen, and the supports, they're still dead. <laughs> this late game here now, you have the fifth Dragon for both of the teams. You have, of course, still the Baron alive. It didn't actually die Only beforehand. Four. Only four, yeah. It's Only four on for each team, yeah. Video. Don't get sure. too excited. Next one. But it's still, you're right, It's this is just getting so tense. If a massive fight does go in any direction, that's gonna be game over. The items are still important for Rocket because they were a bit behind on a few of them, but you're approaching that six item threshold on most everyone. Most of Elements do have it. And actually, Rocket are moving very quickly in the direction of this Baron. So much mobility on both these teams. And Froggen actually running a build where he's not using any Void Staff for the late game here. Despite the Locket on Yankos and of course the Scimitar on Bulite. Feels like he has enough damage and he doesn't need the Void Staff to burn through whatever magic resistance we have on Rocket's side. Everyone is getting close to being maxed out. And then, except actually the top laners are still very far behind in goal. I mean, they just die, the guy is dying every single time. And then it's all about the carries, the mid laner and the AD carry. 
against each other here in this game. Yeah, it's a really, really tense game all around just because of that late game carry potential. But as much as elements have thrown at Rock out, they've been able to throw it right back. They've saved their inhibitor in that middle a number of times. And the wave control has just been spectacular. Yankos playing a much more supportive Rex side this game as well. So not so much as we saw that first time she was picked up in the European LCS. But Element's not really able to get in here and force the fights they want. No, but they keep controlling the vision in this game because, again, they're running the double sides on the end. You have a totem giving a pink ward from Frog and a totem giving a green ward from Wicked. So you just have to have more options to place down these wards here and establish the control. Rocket, once again, waiting around. I wouldn't be surprised to see both teams just wait for the next dragon. See who gets it, or maybe try and trade it for Baron, but trading 5th Dragon for Baron is not exactly going to be a good trade for you. Yeah, I agree with you. It's really been a long, drawn-out slugfest. And how big would it be for Rocket to come back to win this one after going 1-2 and two early on? For Elements, they obviously want to secure this one up, but Rocket is a very tough opponent, very tenacious, and they'll just keep fighting it. They will, and I mean, they're going to keep trying. Woolard has managed to get to his full late-game status quite a while ago, and once again, this is a risky Baron here. Yeah, Istar is trying there. almost there, but they it's going to go down. No vision. It's going to be oh, Yankos going there. over. He's going to look for the smite seal a little bit early. He does Shook not it. get it. Shook picks that one up, and Yankos bails out. And Elements managed to grab a very, very risky Baron at 54 and a half minutes. Yeah, and at, at this moment here for Elements, when you're trying to take that Baron and it's this 50-50 smite, what you do as your jungler is you tell your teammate, nuke it now when it's about on 1500 HP ish and then you know they're gonna nuke it and you just smite right after. You saw Rickless here use his box shot on the Baron in the very end and then followed by the smite so it was secured by Elements. Yeah Yankos went in a little bit early got kind of hyphy on that one. Now regardless Rocket have not given up too much for this. They were able to go back quick enough and push the waves back in their favor. Elements however are gonna have some time on this Baron and then, of course, Dragon number 5 starts to come into play. Yeah, and now again, if you push up these side lanes for elements and then go to the mid lane, wait for the waves to come, you have the Baron buffed up here, you can actually very quickly go from mid to, say, top lane, buff up these minions here, make it very hard for Rocket to clear them, and you should be able to take down a tower if that happens. You see Wicked turning from the top lane, the wave is going to push for him. Bottom lane is going to do the same for elements, so now you just push up the mid lane, wait for your two side lanes, and then you move between them to take down these last few turrets. Look how hard it is for Rocket yeah. to clear these minions. Even with the amount of damage that they have, these Baron min these barrened up minions are really, really difficult to shove back. And that cannon one's going to be so irritating to deal with because it, you can't check into it safely. Look at that crazy engage that Elements is just baiting out. So this is going to be a harder test for them. Maybe if they can get a catch on someone and force the fight, but the minion waves they're still coming. They are slowly being built up. At least the top wave is building for elements. Now uh, using that cannon minion, which died with the piece. So he brought attention to it. There it goes. Wards down as well. A little cheeky there from elements as they build up a bigger wave with the cannon. It's already at half health. Nuke Duck forced to use. His on his hour, but still a lot of damage. Yeah, they don't have the threat here, and the equalizer was thrown down, making them think twice. And it's so low, but they should be able to finish it off. They have the damage. There we go. But will they make it out alive? Jankos is going to go in. Vander flash hook. They find Wicked. However, the Leona Elverpow so low. Zanya's is on, but he won't live for long. Actually, I was completely wrong. Never mind. Reckless is going to take him down, and that is one for none so far. Vander not going to connect on the hook. They get the inhib. They should be able to get out, or if they want. Push up the top side. Yeah, straight Just swing to the it. top lane again. You build up this minion wave beforehand. Take it, push it in. Overpower is dead for the next minute. There should be another tower and inhibitor here for Elements. Slow march to victory. That is how Elements likes this game. Should change their logo to a turtle next season. Turtle they're going to start shoving this one in. So much oh, damage. Yeah, goes, they're going to try to make the effort. They caught Frog in, though. He's got his on, his on as well. And the rest of the team is backing up. They didn't time the skill shots. They catch Nif as well. Nuke Duck's going to blow him up, but the tower is down. Can Elements keep this up? The answer is no. They're still chasing. Chilling Smite down onto Wicked. Yeah, oh, the oh, they get it, Wicked. So low, but Nuke Duck doesn't connect on the chains. They Big look for Shook as well. Froggen tries to find the damage. Woolite, half of his health is gone after the charm. They're still looking for Shook. Can they get him down? The rockets are flying. 
Team Rocket is flying forward. Shook kicks them back. No, thank you. There's the denial. They still are on the hunt, and Nuke Duck comes up with the kill. Wicked now chase back, but they have to get back to base and defend. They've got themselves two in the aftermath. Yeah, so our elements here should be able to stay in the game despite losing two members. Yeah, no problem for them, but the dragon is alive, and that's going to be the goal here for Rocket. Froggen's still hanging around because he knows this is such a tense moment here. Not enough minions to push in, and actually, Overpower, now that he's back, there's a big wave pushing down bottom. Elements is actually in some trouble from that follow-up. Fifth Dragon should go over to Rocket. There's nobody there to try to contest it. They've got the damage, and they go Super Saiyan. They've got some time yeah. in the books, Deficio. Then you go back now, you buy your items, you push down the mid lane where the Super Minions are, you make sure none of the side lanes are pushing against you, and then you use this Massive Baron buff you have, 12% AD and AP, 58 minutes in, that is a very, very big buff. And of course, the true damage as well coming in from you now, being picked up. So you push down this mid lane, make sure the super minions can't do anything to your Nexus turrets. They did actually lose a single one beforehand, which is actually a while ago when Elements tried to finish the game. And now you look for these fights because you are so much stronger. Yeah, Rocket really pushing the limits of this one. Getting into that six item territory, you actually see Woolite -Eye selling his boots for the Zephyr, so that's how you know it's a long game. That's a risky one, though. It Let's is a bit some movement case. speed here. And he also loses the cooldown on his summoners when he picked up uh, that enchant as well, so I don't know how well that's going to work out for him, but for the moment, Rocket is pushing down this tower. Yeah, this tower is going to die very, very fast. There's 511 AD on Woolite at the moment, and he has 30% more damage on a tower as well. If he ever gets. Just a few seconds, then he will destroy it. The key is but he knows. Safe. Yeah, exactly. Sanders done an excellent job of that. He's only died twice now. The siege is on. They have so well, much damage. Going in. There we go. They don't have the follow-up, though. This is going to force them to back away for a moment. It's hard to push in with the super minions. But that dragon buff, that fifth dragon buff, is so big for Rocket right now. And in a few more seconds, yes, we have officially passed an hour into this game, yeah. Fischio. And Rocket should just stay in this mid lane. The ulti's gone from Nif now. At least for another 20, 25 seconds. So Woolite, they got the wave. Go in. Try and get a few hits here. But still needs to be careful again. Shook can try and kick him in again. Froggen with a charm. This tower, though, is going down. They've done it. They've cracked the it. shell. Yeah. It took them an hour to do it, but they've finally been able to take down an inhibitor turret. Still, Elements is threatening. But against this five Baron Rocket squad, it's going to be tough to defend it. Look at those rockets just chunking now. How much damage they're able to do. Dodging the charm there, Froggen trying to get in. That one is going down Another to the inhibitor. They've traded. It's in the middle. They've got two inhibitors down, one apiece in the middle. But Rockets is going to come up yeah. a lot sooner. And they've got waves. They can push Look down at the, the bottom side. side. Look at the side lanes. A massive one on the top side. The big one here on the bottom side. They're going to push him for the next one. You still have the buff from the dragon. Oh, they're going to look oh, for Froggen. Froggen. He's found Yankos. Oh, my goodness. So much damage. Reckless is able to pick him up. And Rocket are in hot retreat now as they go a little far forward and take too much damage. That's going to be over a minute till Yankos is back on the field. Yeah, back to base with you, Rocket, here. Baron is now spawning. Elements are going to get the Baron for this because the jungle is dead. And that's why Rocket is staying around. They want to try and rush oh. in, get the inhibitor here, trade that for the Baron, and then recall after. They're waiting a little bit They're longer. Them. This is this is brilliant right now from Rocket. And going. There we go. Moving it forward. And how long will it take them to realize timer is ticking down? Here we go. Baron is happening, but Rocket have their eyes set on the base. Remember, and there's no reaction. Tower's going down. Faster recalls once you have the Baron killed. But they don't have it yet. Elements, but they don't have it yet. No oh, inhibitors. They're actually gone. backing away here. So they do trade it, but it's still two inhibitors close by each other. Rocket get out. They're able to make that. I think they honestly could have pushed in for a little bit more, but it would have been really, really risky at that point. That would have been too risky, yeah, with the Baron recalls coming in here. We're taking a few seconds, four elements, and also being five guys. Remember, Yankos is still dead for another 10 seconds. But this is great, because even though they've given up the Baron to elements, the last time they were able to take an inhibitor just barely. This time, they don't have inhibitors on their middle and their bottom. So there's super minions that are going to meet them in two of those lanes. Yeah. It's going to make it a bit harder for them to push up, but they might, they're just going to look for the last fight. Yeah. Two minutes on Dragon, though, exactly. too. You have the the Baron elements buff. could grab that one just because of the Baron buff that they have and try to secure up a little bit more for themselves. Rocket in a bit of a fix, but Yankos is back up now. Can they hold off this push, though? That's the question. 
That is the big question. Ooh, Overpower. Oh, yeah. He's, He's waiting. Plank. He knows that they don't see him here. He could throw down the Equalizer. Charm is going to connect on Yankos, but there is no follow-up again. Wicked has Big Gnar at really inopportune time, actually. It's going to run out in just a moment. And they're still pushing through this, but there's not a lot of wave pressure pushing in their favor elsewhere. So if they can get this inhibitor, it would be huge for them. But Rocket's still keen on defending this one. Yeah, this is a very, very risky play by Elements, considering the fact your sidelines are pushing against you. Supermans will pour into your Nexus from the bottom lane. So they have to make this push count here. They have to take the right fight as well for this to pay off. They need that inhibitor down. Yeah, they're getting chunked. There's the equalizer. They're actually going to bail out of this one. Froggen is caught a little bit farther behind. Do they have the chunk for him? Big Gnar comes out. Wait a minute, Overpow just gets exploded and wicked in the back, causing some havoc. Here they go. This could oh, be the open up. A double kill to Reckless. Rocket is blasting off again. And that looks like it's going to be Elements only. Nuke Duck is there to defend this. Inhibitor goes down. And when all looks lost, Elements coming up ahead. Nuke Duck getting blown up. Froggen with the ace. Inhibitor. Nexus going down, 64 minutes in. Elements take all the way back to the base. And what a game of objectives and buffs here. All about the Baron buff, all about the fifth dragon for the last 20 minutes. So close. It was ridiculous how many times that one went back and forth. And at that moment, the last ditch effort, they pass 100,000 gold in that game. Gold didn't even matter at that point. They go ahead and manage to wipe out Team Rocket. Smiles, but a hint of doubt there for Elements. They had such a hard time finishing this yeah. game off. Very, very tough game. And for Rocket here, I mean, you play Fnatic yesterday. You face Elements today. Same kind of game, actually. You go full late game. You have your AD carry as the hyper carry. And you come back in the game, you're so close, and yet you end up losing the last team fight and you lose the game for them. There were some very, very good plays here, some good calls, a lot of focus again on the mini waves, how they were pushing. But in the end, the trade where Elements said, we want, we want to get the Baron buff, you're going to get inhibitor and we're going to take that last team fight with the Baron buff and we're going to win it. That was the game winning call for them. It paid off. I do believe in the very last team fight, actually, the Mega Nar or the ulti from Wicked. It was really well timed there. Yeah, it just managed to pull Willard, who actually flashed away back into the team and he ended up dying for exactly. it. Exactly. It looks like Rocket actually was going to take that for just a moment. They caught Froggen, but again, it got turned around. The timing of the Nar, everything went Elements' way at the end of that one, and there was just no stopping it. It's such a late game. And Rocket, you got to think, they're one in three on this record, but they've had such a tough series of opponents yeah. in a row. It's pretty admirable how close these things have been. It could have easily been them at 3-1. and one. It could. I mean, again, they've had two very, very close games against Elements and Fnatic, two of the top teams we have here. So it's not all bad for Rocket. We're going to see next week where they should have a lot easier schedule. I can just try and find it here in a second, actually, yeah. who they're facing. Because when they are going to meet the lower tier teams in the league at the moment, they should be able to win against them. Yeah, really, really hard to judge them on, uh, on the schedule they currently have right now. It was just a series of incredibly difficult games. They played amazing defensive plays all around. And against Elements, I mean, this is a team that at a certain point, they just kick it into like 11 and they just go. <laughs> they just go and you cannot stop them. It was still a little bit sloppy. They made some misplays. Rocket took advantage. Really, it was a great back and forth. I, I was just amazed was. at how close it ended up being. And considering that... Elements was able to make the first move on a number of plays. They were able to get that first inhibitor. Rocket defended a number of times. They got yeah. Barons. They snuck Dragons. They got their way back into the game. I'm really excited to see how they do going forward in the split, but it's, it's just a rough start. They do have to worry about the early game because they are falling behind against Fnatic and now against Elements as well. They fall behind. They give up a lot of towers and Dragons to the other team, which again makes it even harder for them to come back. So once they actually start winning the, winning the team fights. It's not like they can just walk down and close out the game. It's more like, okay, we won the first one. We need to win another one and another one before we really back in this game here. And that's the biggest problem for them because they have some good players. They know how to play at least a late game or at least get to the late yeah. game points. At the, well, 60, but they're too weak. 63 they're, minutes, I suppose. Yeah, but honestly, they fall too far behind. Yeah, in although game. I really want to give some praise to Nuketuck this time around. He stepped up massively. He didn't build the Magi's, didn't trust that one, and he went a much more conventional build. Uh, no DFG, but mm -hmm. he was able to make a lot more plays. He didn't get too far out of position. He played extremely well against Froggen, 
of all mid laners as well. So, you know, again, they've stepped up to a certain level, but you're right. They need to cover their early game. They should have never been that far behind to a certain degree in about the mid. They are able to thunder back, but, you know, not enough to close the game out. And that's, that's what's yeah, troubling. Yeah, exactly. And again, there's a problem for them two times in a row now. So next week, we're going to have to see. I think Rocket is, start, is starting to get some kills or will start to get some kills and some wins. Yeah. My eyes on that one, but also yeah. those, oh, those Vander, those Vander oh, the life Vander saves one, too, man. That was pretty great. We're going to go ahead and send it back to the analyst desk now where Shox is sitting down with a member of Elements. Thank you very much, Pyra. Joined here by Shook after that hard-earned victory over Rocket. The first thing you said when you came over here was, that should have been a lot easier. Tell me why. Like, we were dominating. Like, early on, we had a slow start. We got first blood, but we traded objectives. We got towers, they got towers. They got the first dragon, I believe. Then we got that, that dragon. But at the end, like, we were in their jungle all the time. We got all their boss, we got all their camps. And Somehow we just managed to fail when we when it came to the inhibitor. Like we should have been, like not losing any members, taking the inhib. I feel like we were stronger, but we somehow managed to get caught and just die one by one. So what were your feelings at that point? Because you, you were pushing out like really aggressive, but every time you just got caught out. Like uh, we felt like we know in scrims we would we would do it way better. Like I don't know what, what happened this game. Like I don't know exactly what happened, but like the small mistakes managed to let us get caught out by them, and then they capitalized well on our mistakes and just went further than it should have had. Yeah, and uh, you actually picked Lee Sin when Jawan was open. You're going to went for that Narwan. It's just you're so confident in you, Lee. I think if you had the Narwan combo, it might have been a bit easier to finish out the game. But do you think you still did the right choice going for your epic Lee Sin? Yeah, I feel like the Jarvan pick would, would have suited the comp better, but I feel like Lee Sin against Rek'Sai is a way better matchup for Lee Sin. If you pick Jarvan against Rek'Sai, you can expect to be invaded all the time, especially if they fill a blank. Like, and just be in my jungle all the time and punish me. With Lee Sin, it's way easier for me to handle them. But then you guys both get to the late game and both Rek'Sai and Lee Sin are not the absolute heroes of the late game. Tell me about Rocket getting the fifth dragon and how you guys traded that in your head. Like, okay, we'll let them have it and then we'll try and get Baron? Yeah, like, we'll, we went for the dragon, but they ended up getting it. Like, we were just turtled at our base. Like, we waited for the dragon buff to disappear. Like, someone got their inip, though, because dragon fifth buff is OP. Mm -hmm. And um, then we just managed to trade our bot, bot inhibitor for, their, for the Baron buff. And we managed to push down their inhib with Baron buff and win the fight. And that made us win the game. Yeah, let's actually take a look at one of the team fights from in the game. Let's get the first one up on the screen where you guys are uh, fighting around Baron. And I guess the idea for the team is here. We got to get Woolite down. Let's roll the clip and talk us through it, Shook. Yeah, here we somehow managed to get Woolite. Like, really good engages from our team. And I'm just trying to peel. Like, I just try to protect my team as good as I can. And we just somehow managed to get a good catch onto them and win. Yeah, we're going to see that here as a Nif lands the Zenith Blades and goes in and Woolite has to exit the fight. And then you guys try and get him down and it, nobody gets up getting the Baron, I believe, in that one. Should have been way easier for us this game. Like, sloppy fight still. <laughs> um, tell me about how, if you're Lee Sin in that late game, you can't really jump in anymore. You say that you try to peel, but what is your role? You can't engage either. Like. Depends on the setups. If they have like a Thresh LeBlanc, it's way easier for them to shut me down if I jump in. Like, I don't want to jump in and die and then my team gets killed because I'm dead. So I just try to stay in the back and help my team as good as I can. Let's take a look at a, another team fight of you guys later when you try and push down the mid inhibitor. Let's get that up on the screen because it's such an important moment right here. And you guys do decide to go in or Froggen does, but it's not optimal. Let's roll the clip, Shook, uh, walk us through this one. Like here we try to force LeBlanc's uh, Sonya and force her to not do any damage, because right now she can insta-kill someone of our team. Like with any any type of champion, she can just insta-kill. Here we just try to stop her from doing damage, but they get a really good Drumble ult, and they just chase us down, and just an unfortunate fight for us. Yeah, I do believe you, get up, uh, you end up getting the inhibitor, so after all, you got that, you got the super minions streaming in for you guys. And then later on, you guys uh, will win the game going through mid once again. Yeah. Tell me what was uh, the key element in the very last time that you went through the mid lane. Uh, I saw Reckles getting a couple of good kills where it's just that everything fell in place. You were able to kill Woolite and that's with it. Yeah, but we just, our focus point was Woolite. Like he was super fat this game and we just tried to kill him with all we had. And we just forced Leona ults to make him quick over and in the end it worked out for us. All right, a uh, final question. What is your opinion on your strength as elements right now? We know that Fnatic and SK are doing well, and maybe SK is doing the best out of all of those. Um, do you feel you're up there with them? 
I feel like we're definitely up there in there. I think in scrims, we're way better than we play in LCS right now. We just have to transition that into LCS, and then I think we'll be number one. All right. Well, thank you very much for that. Shook, we need to go AFK for a moment, but we'll be back as SK Gaming faces the Unicorns of Love. Tweet at LOL Esports with hashtag SK1 or hashtag UOL1, and let us know who you think will rise victorious. Oh. oh. I'm still missing my key on my keyboard. Someone stole it. Your Q? Someone took away my F10. <laughs> it's on eBay. <laughs> I saw it yesterday. Froggen coming in, trying to pick two targets at once. He does make a pretty good job of it. Overpower pretty low. We go now, we go now. Jinx, 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 Jinx. Nice, fresh, nice. Fresh, 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 fresh. Fight them all, fight them all, fight them all. Kill him. Get the rumble. And then get the rumble, get the rumble. You get him? Nice. Yeah. Nice, get him on. We got him. Nice. 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 They're going in for round number two. Nif, it's a double kill for Wolet. They're looking for more. Somehow, somewhere, Rock had to flip the on switch. Bignar comes out. Wait a minute, Overpow just gets exploded and wicked in the back, causing some havoc. Here they go. This could oh, be the opener. Hunt 